Hey there, traders. I received an email from Arif this morning um, in regards to two trades that he did yesterday, uh, both of which that ended up going against him. Um, they were Pound CAD and USD CAD. And I thought instead of sending him a lengthy email reply, it'd be easier if I just created a video explaining what the issues were. Um, and he did give permission for me to share this with you guys so that you could learn from it as well. So first of all, I want to show you his email address. So I've just copied and pasted his email here. So basically what he did was he shorted both pound CAD and USD CAD and he said the, he recognized correlation between the two. Um, just first off, when we're looking at um, currency pairs and correlations, what we've got to look to see is the currencies that make up that currency pair. So we realize that pound CAD is a cross pair, right? So we've got to also analyze pound USD and USD CAD to determine if whatever structures are forming within this um, cross pair is proper for us to be able to take that trade and count it as a decent setup. The other one, when we're looking at, say, USD CAD, we realize that in, in, in this case, um, both base currencies, uh, pound USD here, would also form a major together. So when we're doing the analysis of pound USD here, what we're going to be determining is if there is a reason for the pound to, to weaken, right? If there is a reason for pound to weaken, um, then naturally we'll say that the US dollar will be strong or that will strengthen as well. So that's when you'll see pound USD coming down. For pound CAD to be a successful trade, that is one of the scenarios that needs to happen for us to be able to successfully trade that. So pound has to weaken, US dollar has to strengthen. The US dollar strengthening and the pound remaining the same possibly isn't good enough. When I'm trading primarily cross pairs, what I prefer is that the base currency is the one that's the cause of the movement. I would prefer the quote currency, the, which is the second one here, to be doing exactly the opposite because that just creates an environment where the, the trade is just so much more comfortable, right? So again, one of the scenarios for um, pound cat to be successful is for the pound to weaken and the US dollar to strengthen, right? On the flip side, what we also need to happen is either the Canadian dollar to hold its ground or we want that to significantly strengthen, right? And in this case where he took a trade both with pound CAD and USD CAD, <coughs> the only scenario that can happen is that both the pound and the US, well, actually, what, what needs to happen here is the pound needs to weaken significantly, the US dollar needs to hold its ground, and the Canadian dollar, there's got to be some amazing reason why that is strengthening, right? So the first thing we can do straight off the bat is jump onto Forex Factory or investing.com or FX3, whichever new site you utilize. And we'll look to see, first of all, that he's looking at trading this at the open of New York, right? So he's seeing this engulfing candle. Say, for instance, this is happening, there's five minutes left till the end of this candle. So we quickly jump onto forexfactory.com and have a look to see what the registered news releases are. Now, um, my New York session open is at 10, a, uh, 10 p.m., right? So this would be happening at 10.30. Right, so, uh, sorry, this is 10 a.m., this is um, uh, 10.15, and this would be 10.30 here, right? So, at 10.30, we did have a Canadian news come out, current account balance. Now, current account usually doesn't have a significant impact, and this is a, a separate video that needs to be made in regard to that, but it's not something that has a significant impact on a currency pair. Beyond that, we've got USD news, okay? So, with... Preliminary GDP USD wise at 10.30 being 4.2%, which is slightly higher than expectation, right? That usually means that the US dollar will get a slight boost. Okay, chances are um, this was already 
expected, so market kind of factored that in. But keep in mind that this is significant. So straight off there as well, two things nullify for me. The first thing is that in regards to um, pound CAD, there is no specific reason for the Canadian currency to strengthen. In fact, if we were to say the um, current account balance is negative and that will cause some sort of effect on the market, that would mean that the pound would go up and the, the Canadian currency will come down because you're effectively taking a trade um, uh, 15 minutes into this news release. The other thing is that you we've had good news for the US dollar. So you could say that it might be the, the US dollar that weakens the uh, pound uh, slightly, and that's the reason for the move. But if that is the case, then trading pound CAD is of no benefit to you because you want there to be a reason for one of the currencies to be moving there. So at this stage, there's no reason for the CAD to move, and there's absolutely no reason for the pound to move, right? So that should nullify that trade entirely. Um, when we're looking at USD CAD, we've got two things. So again, current account balance not the best for, for CAD, so it's not going to significantly strengthen for the US dollar to come down. And also, with the GDP for um, the US dollar, it's better than expected. Right, so what that would say is that there's reason for the U.S. dollar to strengthen, but there's absolutely no reason for the Canadian dollar to strengthen. So again, just off looking at news releases, it nullifies both trades. So you shouldn't have taken that trade in itself. Now, when we're looking at both these pairs, we also recognize one is a complete cross pair. So we've got to look at two majors that make up that pair. Pound USD and CAD USD, right? We've all already talked about USD CAD, uh, sorry, USD CAD and Pound USD. So we already talked about USD CAD. Um, now let's have a quick look at Pound USD. We've already um, ascertained that uh, yes, there is a slight reason because of US GDP that the pound may take a little bit of a hit, but there's nothing major to cause that hit to happen. Again, going back onto Forex Factory, is there any um, UK-related news that's coming out um, around that time? Nope. That's at around midnight my time as well. Also, when we're looking at um, pound USD, or, or just pound being the base currency of the currency pair, um, you realize that we are probably going into the tail end of the London session as well. So... What is the likelihood of something major happening around that time? Yes, we've got possibly fundamentals that can happen that are not registered because keep in mind, most registered fundamentals will happen in the first few hours of the session. And that's the reason why we talk about trading the first few hours as opposed to delaying your entries. So as we see, there's no uh, news releases that are registered there. So just off... Um, fundamentals, there's absolutely no reason for that trade. So let's have a look at technicals. So when you're looking at this, we say, yep, yeah, we've got a, what looks to me like a bit of a triple top hit to the EMA 200 um, engulfing candle. And I suppose you either took your trade here or here. So um, let me just confirm that. So I entered after the next candle at the 1545 mark. So I'm assuming uh, just going off my own time, this is 10, 15, this is um, 30, so 45, it would be here. Okay. So, uh, sorry, here, you would have taken your entry at the open of this candle. Now, let me just have a quick look because we see, that's 13. Okay. So, you're very close to 20 pips there now okay so very close to 20 pips there and i can see why you'd probably want to have that continue on now again remember we've just said fundamentally there's no reason for that move to happen let's quickly have a technical look at pound usd and usd cad okay straight off the bat here 
couple of issues. One is that for the EMA 800 that's down here, so where you took your entry on pound CAD, where you would have been doing the analysis here, right? On pound USD, you probably would have seen this and this candle here. So I'm assuming this would have been your entry here. The first thing we notice is again, this um, EMA 800 is like a brick wall that's there. And the presence of the EMA 200 is another brick wall. So you get a double brick wall house there that you need to ram right through in order for the market to continue going on. The other thing is also, remember we discussed that the pound needs to weaken significantly for your pound CAD to be a legitimate trade. And when we saw that the US GDP news came out, and so this is that this would have been the cause of that movement, this this 15 minute candle. Notice how tiny it is. Now let's put it into perspective. Let's get rid of that. So this is now the cause of that movement. The other thing I'd look at in real time then is all of this. So I'd say 800 down below, um, price is kind of hovering, like my EMA 200 is now going sideways. The 50 is interacting with this, but it's really going nowhere. Price over the course of the last two days is effectively consolidating. So um, in order for me to expect that price will go against this initial trend. If we zoom out a little bit, we've got price probably going up. So uh, pound pound is strengthening against the US dollar slightly. And then we start to recognize that, hey, we've got some structure here. Uh, and this is where it helps. I usually have these drawn in um, days, weeks in advance. So we realize now that on the daily chart pound USD, we've got a channel going down. What about rules for channels? 90% plus times. Um, when you have a down channel, then price will bounce off the bottom and break to the high. Um, if channel's going up, then we expect it to hit the top and for price then to fall down. That's what the expectations are. Okay? So, in this case, we've got another confluence point against you taking this trade because we're expecting price to go up now notice how with this channel I probably would have drawn it in based on this but we've got a, a, a fairly decent hit to the channel here retest going up now this candlestick pattern would have been ideal down here where it would have would have happened against this and with the uh, existence of an EMA that would have been ideal confluence point and then we trade the market going south Right, so technically speaking, the pound USD currency pair is showing us absolutely no reason why this needs to short. So, again, that's the third reason why we'd probably not want to take that trade. Let's have a look at USD CAD, which is the other major that makes up that currency. Now, uh, assume again we are talking about here or here, this is where your entry would have been. So, in order for USD CAD to fall um, again, which kind of doesn't work with our pound USD analysis. We would want to have strengthening of the Canadian dollar for some specific reason or legitimate significant weakening of the US dollar. We've just seen GDP release was better than expected, so there's actually no clear reason why that the US dollar needs to weaken um, for price to kind of continue going south, right? So, but but the thing was, if, oh, actually, you took your, um, just one more thing, entry was at 6, uh, 1615, so you took it a half an hour afterwards, right? So if this was the entry, then your entry would have been here. Um, now, structurally speaking, mate, there is no pattern. I don't recognize a pattern. You need to have like a double top formation or something like, you know, for example, here. Up, down, up, down, 
and you've got a clear double top formation here, there is no actual formation, no market structure, no candlestick formation that's happening, and also you're kind of looking for an entry when we when we've discussed it that's already below here. Remember, we want the retests to happen. You've got a candlestick retest here on this candle, but where's the structural retest? Um, also, if you're going to trade this up here, we want the significant hit to the EMA 200. We really want it to be nice because this is the difference between just any entry and a good setup. The other thing is in regards to trading this here, if you're saying that this is going to happen at the EMA uh, 50, then what you want to do is have price come down and then go up and and hit a fib point, a clear fib point, and then uh, continue down. But if it's above the 50 and below the 200, that probably should be no man's land because you need to see price doing something at a uh, an area that is your... Um, like your kill zone. Remember, part of the criteria is where price has to be at the EMAs. Now, let's just play with uh, fibs just briefly to see if there is um, potential of something. So let's look at this high and this low, right? Right. So we've got up here one confluence point, which is the presence of the 618 area. Let's just jump onto a higher time frame to see if we have the recognition of a clearer structure, which is here. Okay, so we've just got one engulfing candle coming down, and that's the extent of it. We don't have clear structure. Structure doesn't confirm and complete until here. Okay, also, I think I just recognized something as well. Also with this, on a 15-minute chart, when the markets do look slightly messy, remember we always jump into a higher time frame to confirm um, overall structure. So, notice this. Let me just put a line in there and then jump onto a 15-minute chart. And this is where we realize that here, if we would have looked to take a trade here because this is kind of like a tweezer top happening at the EMA 200, we would have got into a little bit of trouble with all of this. But notice how on a one hour chart where we have a established structure, this is a double top formation happening off the EMA 50. That's when we say on a 15 minute chart that market's gone through all its noise and then we take an entry here. It's just you'd have to look to see um, how late in the day that is in New York session to be able to take that. But just by the look of this, you just want to stay the hell away from it. Okay, so man, I don't see any sort of a setup here. Correlation wise, I think when you mention this, um, correlation wise, it doesn't work because in this case, um, it's not a uh, CAD USD pair, it's a USD CAD pair. So the base currency, you've always got to make sure it's kind of in line with it. It's like saying USG, USD JPY and then looking at pound JPY. You can't exactly say just off of that that USD JPY and pound JPY are so correlation within it. The only correlation you can have there is that the yen is either strengthening or weakening, right? But um, in saying this, you can't expect this to be shorting and for this to be shorting as well without the Canadian dollar strengthening or there being significant reason for the Canadian dollar to strengthen. Okay, so that in itself. Um, nullifies that trade. Okay, now in regards to this, so you were in the money briefly, um, probably for half an hour, and then this market went against you. For all of those people out there that um, write to me about stop losses, you know, my theory on stop losses are that your trade entry, your analysis should be so good that the the need for a stop loss should not arise, right? I've said this. But at the same time, I say to you guys that have a stop loss in every single trade, right? Tina knows what I'm talking about. And the reason for that is this. 
that there are going to be times when someone of some importance somewhere in the world is going to be saying or doing something that is going to cause an immediate shift in market sentiments. You could get all of your technicals right. You could get all of the whole criteria met. And then you look at something like this and you think, what the F? Why did the market go up against me? And when you're looking at just this in particular, from bottom to top in that 15 minutes, that's 132 pips. So for a lot of people, that's enough to wipe them out. And this is the reason why we have um, stop losses in place. So we look to see why that happened. Why did the market just shift sentiment? So we've already determined that there was no actually specific news release happening. That is about two hours into New York. And for me, that would be about midnight. So we've got absolutely no reason here whatsoever that um, the markets move. So what do we do? So what I generally do is scroll down to have a look to see what the breaking news has been. Because remember, all of this stuff up here is registered news releases. That does not mean that there are other fundamentals that don't exist out there. They do exist and they will have a significant impact on your trading. And this, where, where we are right now, what's um, important is to note that we have so many different things happening, economically speaking, in the world right now that you really have very little control over the fundamentals. Like, you know, President Trump, of the things that he will instruct his economic advisors to do. Um, <clears throat> or Treasury to do, for example, in terms of trade wars. Um, the stuff that's been happening with Turkey, uh, Brexit. Europe and the UK are having a real tough time coming up with some sort of a deal for Brexit and time is running out. So the, the, the market really is fluctuating in terms of sentiment. So this is why we need to be somewhat wary. So we look to see if there is... Okay, we need to go down more. We look to see if there is any specific news that happened around that time. So we are at almost 11... Uh, AM my time and this happened at around midnight my time right so we're looking back at least about 11 hours okay so what happened in 10 11 hours ago okay right so what could affect what could affect significant moves in terms of pound here? Pound here. Let's have a look at USDJPY. Okay. So the US dollar didn't do the big move here, right? It didn't do a big move here. So we've got now the pound strengthening here. We've got pound strengthening here. So look at pound JPY and the pound strengthening here. So what this tells me is that this move here is to do with something that happened with the pound, right? So when we go back about 10 hours ago, we had some news releases happening with something to do with Brexit. That's what we're looking for, something to do with Brexit. Okay, and here we go. We're getting that you, um, EU's Barnier says we are prepared to offer partnership with Britain such as has never been with any other third country. Now, that in itself would be massive for the pound because what's being suggested is that there is something that they're ready to put on the table to say, let's sort this out. When that happens, the pound will go nuts. So in this case, this has caused a massive move just with pound JPY alone. If you're looking at it, that's about 219 pips. Again, for anyone that did not have stop losses in place, if you're kind of trading against it, that would have been enough to wipe you out. So when we come back to this point here, um, that's the recognition of why that market movement happened. It's not a registered news release. 
completely goes against all the technicals that we've had, right? So that's the reason why you get in, you get out. But mate, from everything we've discussed in this video, I don't see a reason why um, you should have taken this entry. Always make sure when you're trading across a cross pair, always make sure to look at uh, what the two majors are doing, look at the fundamentals, and actually look for a legitimate reason as to why that currency or the currency pair should actually be moving. Um, I, I have mentioned this in, in a previous video, I'm going to say this again here. Me personally speaking, when I am trading a, um, a cross pair in particular, it's, it's important for me that it's the base currency that is the primary reason for the move and it's of extreme importance at the same time that the quote currency has to be a strong currency that's holding its ground or it's a weaker currency that's going and getting stronger it's going against the base if at any point in time you see that the two majors confirm for you that the base is weakening um, and quote is strengthening or base is strengthening and quote, quote is weakening that is the only time that you should take a um, cross pair trade um, and that would be legitimate okay so um, my throat is choking um, that's it for this video and I'm hoping this makes sense to you all right all the best guys